الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, in order to achieve contentment there are certain things we should not be doing. These are also mentioned in the Quran. So if we are to take heed and abstain from certain things or be warned of certain things, we would then be able to increase the chances of our contentment being intact or improving. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment. May he protect us from those things that would take away our contentment. In the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, in verse number 232, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا طَلَّقُتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَبَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنَّ فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ A beautiful verse regarding divorce. Why would Allah make mention of divorce? Allah makes mention of divorce because there is a method of divorcing, yet divorce is the last resort it is something that is disliked and detested but it is permissible allah says when you've issued a talaq you should ensure that you are not oppressing your wives you you have not wronged them you don't leave them hanging in a way that they are neither your wife nor are they the wives of others they are neither married nor are they unmarried sometimes when a person gives one out of three talaqs or two out of three talaqs and they don't give the next one or for example they keep taking this woman back and they play with her Allah says release her in goodness and you will achieve contentment so if you don't release someone whom you are not prepared to live with as a wife and you want you, your intention is not to repair the relationship but rather to fix them you need to know Allah will fix you as simple as that the, this is why Allah mentions this in the Quran to warn us all to say if your intention is not to get back again together with goodness then release the person let them go they are the slaves of Allah they are not your slaves when you think people are your slaves you will never ever have the long-term contentment that the Almighty has prepared for you but if you are a person who understands and realizes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is upon those who show mercy to others you will be merciful you release someone in a respectable respectful way and this is how you will achieve that contentment hence Allah says Fala hunna. don't block them don't block them that's one secondly the parents of the children or the girls Allah says if your child would like to marry someone don't block them even if they would like to return to someone they were previously married to let it happen have a big heart these are adults they know what's better for them sometimes we are more stubborn than the principles we are more stubborn than the people involved in the problem primarily so it becomes a big issue if you want contentment ask yourself if Allah has allowed this who am I to disallow it? And in that way, you will be able to achieve lots of contentment. We look at another verse in the Quran that is very, very important. It's called Ayatul Kursi, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about uh, the protection, the greatness of Allah, the fact that He protects, He looks after. Uh, you know, uh, this verse, if it is repeated in its recitation, every morning and evening and after every prayer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely grant us protection from the devil hence the contentment comes in may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from that contentment similarly we have one of the final verses of surah al-baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the fact that he will not burden anyone with more than they can handle whatever you have whatever difficulties you're going through remember you can cope you can manage a little bit of patience a little bit of forbearance a little bit of effort and keep going and don't lose hope keep going you know you are so close to the solution and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors keep going La nafsan illa wusaha. Allah does not uh, place upon the, the, the you know place a burden upon someone more than they can manage and handle 
So this is from Allah. Don't ever think that the problems you have have broken you. They haven't. You have the strength. Ask Allah for more strength, greater strength. Keep going and your problem will be resolved. Have hope in the mercy of Allah. People have struggled for five years, ten years, and then the problem has suddenly disappeared. People have struggled for longer and then they have come out of it victorious. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do that too. Then we have a very interesting verse just before that verse also in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 285 the importance of writing down things when you owe someone money or you who believe when you have uh, taken money for a period of time from someone, the borrowing, the lending, write it down, make sure you witness it so that, subhanAllah, we are saying you achieve contentment. Everything is in order. It's all written down. You might die. Something might happen. There might be denial. There might be forgetfulness. There might be whatever they may be. If you have not written things down, you are the one to blame. It can be your brother. It can be your father. It can be anyone, your son, whoever it may be. Write it down. If there are any owings, any dealings, write it down. Sign it. Make sure you have a record of it. Make sure there are witnesses who've witnessed it. That is when you will achieve contentment. People have lost sleep. They've lost relations. They've lost, lost their health. They've lost their wealth because they haven't written things down. Look at how blessed the Almighty is. How merciful He is. He's actually teaching us to write things down so that we don't lose sleep so that tomorrow we're not in trouble. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. We take this for granted, but I promise you, you want contentment? Write things down. Learn to strike the agreements. Write them down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good understanding. The next surah is Surah Ali Imran. Surah Ali Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about so many things and we're only going to pick a few little points by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the importance of silence. Subhanallah. You know the words we utter, we are the kings, we are in control of the words we utter. The minute we've uttered them, they are in control of us. Remember that. Before you utter a word, you are in control of the word. The minute you utter that word, the word becomes in control of you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses this matter uh, twice in Surah Al Imran. Once with the story of Zakariya alayhi salam and the second time the story of Maryam alayha salatu was salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when Zakariya was given the news that he was going to have a child, he felt a little bit embarrassed because he was old and so on. He says, Oh Allah, give me a sign. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, The sign that we're giving you is not to speak to people except with some signs. And remember Allah a lot. Increase the remembrance of Allah and declare His praise in the morning and in the evenings. You will achieve success. Allah will protect you. Allah will grant you contentment. Sometimes we speak too much. Sometimes we say things. Sometimes we end up becoming uh, vulgar, abusive with our mouths. It all comes back to haunt us. Sometimes we have a major problem, like in this case, Zakaria alayhi salam felt like he would probably be embarrassed. How is he going to face the people? Allah says, no problem. We are the ones who are going to take care of that. You just increase your closeness to us. Watch what we do for you. Let's go to this. Let's all do the same. Uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested us with something difficult, we develop the relationship with Allah and look what He will do for us. Not all the time is silence golden, but at certain times, silence is definitely golden. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So my brothers and sisters, here is another point of contentment. Watch your mouth, watch your tongue, number one. Number two, develop your closeness to Allah by declaring His praise a lot and 
by remembering him often and you will see how Allah will calm you down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely give you the calmness. You know, when you're quiet and you watch people say things and do things against you and about you, it depends what it is. There's no blanket rule to say be quiet about everything. But at certain times, you need to think. Perhaps by you saying something, the problem might become bigger. Hence, it's better to just remain silent. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 54 of Surah Al Imran, وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ They plot and Allah plots and Allah is the best of planners. Allah's plan is definitely the best. People plot against you, they may plot against me, they may plot against whatever and whoever. The evil plot will only affect negatively those who have plotted it. Because Allah has a plot better than all of that. Allah knows. In fact, when we say the, the makr of Allah, we would actually translate it as the plan of Allah. For people, it's an evil plot. For Allah, it's not an evil plot. It's the counter of the evil plot known as the good plan. So Allah has a good plan to combat every evil plot. You just have to bear patience and take heed. The next time someone does something to plan your downfall, smile. Because your downfall or your success is solely in the hands of Allah. It's not in their hands. Allah has not kept your bread and your butter in the hands of someone else. But Allah has guaranteed that He will grant it to you. You know, elevation and izzah comes from Allah. Uh, the downfall of a person comes from Allah and from themselves as well in the sense that if they were to do something silly, they are to blame. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. What we've said today is absolutely important. Short words, you take lesson from what we've said and I, I I promise you, you will achieve a lot of contentment, my brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to take heed and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Al-lazheena amanu wa tatma'innu qulubuhum bi dhikri allahi ala bi dhikri allahi tatma'innu al-qulub. Boom.